Okay, not gonna lie, it's been a pretty good couple of days. Uh, so a couple of news items before I begin today's video and talk about AvPoint. Uh, let me just talk about Slack stock quickly for one second. And uh, I'm sure you guys have heard by now what happened to Slack stock. Like, holy crap, right? Uh, in case you guys have been living under a rock and you don't know what happened. Uh, well, a report came out recently that Salesforce is in talks to buy Slack. Uh, so news of this report came out and it just caused Slack stock to absolutely go crazy. And uh, I'll put up a chart right now and you guys can see what happened to the stock. So naturally, if you recall, I bought call options on Slack a while back. And when I saw the news, I, of course, uh, you know, I had to cash out of my call options on the volatility, right? So I ended up cashing out of my call options at $13 per option, uh, which represents around an 85% gain for me. Uh, so I actually pulled the trigger on this a little bit too quickly, actually, because uh, it just kept on going up after I sold the calls. So, you know, if I had just waited a couple more hours, then uh, I would have made well over 100%. But you know what? I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm complaining, right? Because I can't complain about an 85% gain. That's absolutely amazing. Uh, so I sold my shares as well at uh, just under $37 per share. And once again, this was way too early because the stock ended up going to $40 per share. Uh, and I missed out on quite a bit of gain there but uh, I believe I still ended up with like a 40% gain or something so again I can't complain about that uh, now anyways with that out of the way uh, let's talk about the main topic of today's video though which is uh, I came across this stock that I think that is very interesting uh, and I believe that this stock is definitely worth talking about uh, and this stock is of course Avpoint So it's okay if you haven't heard of AppPoint. To be honest, I haven't heard of AppPoint either until this past Monday, uh, which is when they announced their intention to IPO through a SPAC. Uh, and the SPAC's name is Apex Technology Acquisition. So uh, the ticker symbol is APXT. Uh, so that's the stock you kind of have to buy right now if you're interested in buying the stock. So in case you forgot what a SPAC IPO is, it's sometimes also called a reverse merger IPO, uh, which is basically when a company merges with another shell company, or sometimes it's called a blank check company, and it's when a private company merges with that blank check company, and then it becomes a publicly traded company, and they change the ticker of that blank check company, right? So it's been a really popular way for companies to do IPO these days. Uh, and if you recall, Hylion was another company that did a, a SPAC IPO, uh, and now Avpoint is doing a SPAC IPO through Apex Technology. But what's so interesting about Avpoint, you might ask? Well, uh, Avpoint is the largest independent software vendor of SaaS solutions to migrate, manage, and protect data in Microsoft Office 365. Uh, so Avpoint was founded in 2001. It's headquartered in Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, so right there, you can see that there's a bunch of different products uh, or services that they offer, like cloud backups, cloud record keeping, migration services, uh, and services regarding help with corporate governance etc uh, so they help with a bunch of different software solutions so what's interesting about Avpoint is that they've been in the game for a long time so as I said the company was founded in 2001 and what I do like about the company as opposed to uh, other companies that have IPO'd recently and compared to other SPACs that have IPO'd uh, is that Avpoint is actually profitable yeah, I know. Shocking, right? Uh, so anyways, uh, for 2020, they're expected to bring in a revenue of $148 million, which is up 26% year over year. So quite impressive if you ask me. Uh, and they're expected to post 30% or above revenue growth for 2021 and 2022. Uh, so as well, they're expected to maintain a gross margin of above 70% for this year and for the next two years. So, you know, this is what I like about software, right? Uh, their gross margins tend to be extremely high. Uh, and that means that a lot of the money that they make, a lot of revenue that they generate could potentially hit the bottom line. Uh, so you guys know I love a company with a good TAM opportunity as well, uh, which in this case, TAM, in case you forgot, stands for Total Addressable Market. Uh, so in a nutshell, it's an estimate of how big the entire higher industry is. Uh, so Avpoint claims that the total TAM opportunity will be worth $33 billion by 2022, uh, which at first doesn't sound like that big of a number. Uh, but when you're considering the fact that right now for 2020 expected, they're only going to bring in $148 million in revenue, uh, and they're only expected to bring in around $257 million of revenue expected, according to their own numbers in 2022, uh, well, there seems to be much more room to run for this company uh, for revenue if their TAM number is to be believed. And also, 
I should mention that Appoint has no meaningful debt, which is really nice. Uh, so as to the specific details of the merger though, uh, the company is valued at around a $2 billion market cap, and this merger deal is expected to close sometime in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, for reference, I talked about another cloud technology company on this channel a while back, uh, which was Snowflake. And yes, I know Snowflake doesn't compete with uh, Avpoint exactly, right? They don't make the exact same product. Uh, they're not direct competitors, so I know that, but I'm just saying they're generally in the same like industry-ish, right? So just give me a break and run with it for one second. Uh, so Snowflake is more data analytics versus Appoint is more data management, but um, you know, as I said, roughly they're in the same like cloud technology umbrella. Uh, and Snowflake is trading at valuations that are just absolutely insane right now, in my opinion. Uh, so Appoint, by contrast though, looks actually very reasonable. Uh, so while doing research for this company, I also took a deeper look at the company's management. So I came across the interview with uh, the CEO of Appoint, uh, Mr. TJ Zhang. Uh, and honestly, guys, the video had like no views, right? The interview had like no views. So I think it just broke 400 views. Uh, but when I first watched it a couple of days ago, it only had like 300 views. So I'll link the video down below in case you guys are interested in watching that video, which I highly recommend if you're at all interested in potentially buying into uh, Appoint because I think you'll get some good insights. Uh, now, I actually really like the CEO uh, from watching that interview. So I got some good vibes from the CEO and you can tell that uh, he's a tech person at heart. So Mr. Zhang has a master's degree in computer science from Cornell University. And he's also published some papers related to computer science topics too. Uh, so that's very good. That's what I like to see in a company. I want to see a tech person leading a tech company. Uh, yeah, I know. Crazy, right? Uh, I just don't want to see a pure business person leading a tech company because I want a CEO who completely understands the product and how their own products work. Maybe I'm asking for too much, right? Let me know if I'm asking for too much. But uh, if you're wondering what can go wrong if you have just like pure business people leading a tech company that, uh, you know, in my opinion, don't understand the product, their own product, uh, well, just look at, let's say, Boeing, for example, right? So uh, I haven't liked Boeing stock in a really long time. Uh, and there's a major reason for that. And the major reason reason is that uh, I just don't like the management of Boeing and the management of Boeing seems very business focused and they're very lacking in the engineering side. And I believe a story came out a while ago where some text messages between a few Boeing engineers were leaked uh, where the engineers described the Boeing 737 MAX jet as designed by clowns and supervised by monkeys. Uh, yeah, look that story up if you don't believe me. But uh, another example might be AMD versus Intel, right? So uh, AMD is led by the great Dr. Dr. Lisa Su, who in my opinion is one of the best CEOs on Wall Street, uh, end of story. And you know what? She's a PhD from MIT, okay? So uh, the CEO of Intel is not an engineer uh, right now, as far as I'm aware. So uh, you can just look at how well AMD stock has performed versus Intel, right? I'll leave the argument here. Uh, so going back to Avpoint though, uh, Mr. TJ of Avpoint is also the founder of Avpoint or one of the co-founders. Uh, so I think that's a bonus because I really like founder-led companies. Uh, so uh, let's just go through some of the potential risk of investing in Avpoint though. So I told you all about Avpoint and why it's exciting. But what's the catch? Uh, it can't all be sunshine and rainbows all the time, right? What's the catch? Well, uh, the catch is that uh, it might be really clear by now that Appoint is really dependent on Microsoft, right? So in case you haven't noticed, the entire business model is just kind of based on working with Office 365 and uh, built on uh, working with Microsoft Azure, which is Microsoft's cloud service technology. Uh, so if Microsoft one day for whatever reason decided, you know, we're not going to partner with you anymore, we're just going to ditch you. Uh, and if they're no longer in need of Avpoint services, well, that would almost be certain destruction for the company, right? That would be absolutely catastrophic. So it's pretty clear who calls the shots in this relationship between Microsoft and Avpoint. And spoiler, it's not Avpoint. So uh, to me, this isn't a big issue though, just because I think that the chances of Microsoft ditching Avpoint is extremely remote just because it's not clear what the benefit of uh, ditching Avpoint would be to Microsoft uh, since 
as far as I'm aware, everything is working well at the moment, right? I'm pretty sure Alfpoint also won some awards for being like partner of the year or something. Uh, and a couple hundred million dollars of revenue per year. It's not really worth it, in my opinion, for Microsoft to end like a 19 year old relationship just so that they can save themselves a few bucks from here and there. And just what are they gonna do? Rebuild the exact same technology in house? I mean, they could, right? But I don't think that it would make sense considering we're talking about Microsoft, a company that brings in $147 billion in revenue in the past 12 months. And a couple hundred million dollars is literally just pocket change for them, right? So I really don't think that Microsoft would bother with getting rid of Avplane, but who knows? Again, it might happen, right? Uh, so. Uh, that didn't stop me though from taking up a small position in Avpoint. Uh, so today I picked up 175 shares at a cost basis of $11.19 per share. So uh, guess what? I'm already up on this position already, uh, like 20% according to their latest after hours price, which is at $13.25. So uh, yeah, I'm up quite a bit on this position already. And as I mentioned before, I think the reason why the stock is going up so much now as opposed to Monday when the merger was first announced, uh, well, I just think that is only now that people are finding out about it, right? So uh, we got American Thanksgiving right now. So that gives us an opportunity to take a breather from the stock market and get caught up on the news, right? So I'm just saying, I think that after Thanksgiving, uh, when the markets reopen on Friday, I think that uh, you might get a really decent pop. Maybe it'll go even higher than $13 per share. Uh, so I think that once we will have a chance to digest the news, the stock could easily go to like $15 a share just because it has that momentum building for it already, right? And by the way, please don't take this as financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy the stock, okay? So for those of you who are like, Andy, you're just trying to pump the stock. Uh, you're giving me too much credit, right? You think I can pump the stock? Believe me, I, if I could, I would try. But like, uh, you guys are overestimating how famous I am. So, you know, not trying to pump the stock. And I'm not saying that it will definitely go to $15 per share because who knows, right? It could, I could be wrong. It could go back down to $10 per share for all I know. So I'm not recommending you to buy this stock or any stock for that matter. And please do your own research before making any financial decisions. But uh, all I'm saying is that I think that this company has got pretty good potential. And uh, because of that reason, I've decided to pick up a small position in this company. So we'll see, right? I'm still trying to do more research on the stock myself. So it's only been a few days since I found out about the existence of the company. So it's not gonna be that fast that I have like a complete bullish thesis ready or anything like that. So it's gonna take me some time to kind of like fully flesh out the company uh, and like research about it. But I do think that uh, I do like what I'm seeing right now. And I do think that this company has pretty good potential because uh, I think that this is like a way to capture some of the growth of Microsoft, but without actually buying into Microsoft shares the themselves right so uh, that's kind of a really interesting play to me because you're uh, kind of playing Microsoft stock but Microsoft stock is literally at like all-time highs right so uh, you know it's a great way to buy into the growth of Microsoft Azure and Office and all of this uh, without actually buying uh, Microsoft stock so I'm really excited for this one and who knows I might decide to pick up more shares in the future if I do like uh, the way that the company is going and I do like what I find out uh, upon doing more research about this company. So uh, anyways, once again, please make your own financial decisions though. Don't just listen to me. I'm just some guy on YouTube and uh, don't sue me. So <laughs> anyways, uh, be sure to hit the like button. I'll leave the video here. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the video and consider subscribing if you like the series. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Links down below in the description as always. And with that being said, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.